All right, so today I wanted to talk about something that seems to be a little bit of a hot button issue lately, and that's regarding bands using click tracks and or backing tracks live. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it ruining live music or is it cheating? Now this of course is one of those questions that's really hard to answer without having some type of context behind it. So today I just want to quickly go over three different scenarios where using click tracks and backing tracks might make sense and others where it probably doesn't at all. So let's get going. So our first scenario is going to be bands like the Foo Fighters and bands in a similar camp. Now we know that the Foo Fighters don't use any click tracks or backing tracks live. I think Dave Grohl said it a million times. And if you've ever seen the Foo Fighters play, the idea of them using backing tracks or click tracks would make absolutely no sense. I mean, first of all, they tend to speed up and slow down songs depending on how the crowd is reacting to what they're playing. So there's that push-pull dynamic between the Foo Fighters and the audience. Also, at the end of the day live, I mean, they're really pretty much a jam band. I mean, sometimes if you watch Monkey Wrench live, it could be 10 or 15 minutes long. Yet on the album, the song's like four minutes. They'll extend the bridge, do this whole breakdown thing. That can just go on forever. And even that'll speed up and slow down. And a compressor just kicked in because they're putting a new roof on my house. Yay. Sorry about the noise. Anyway, back to my example. So again, a band like Foo Fighters and other bands like that, it would make absolutely no sense to use a click track or backing tracks live. If anything, it would probably be a detriment to their live show, probably hence why they don't bother with it. Now let's take a look at our second scenario. So if we go to the extreme opposite end of the spectrum, let's take a band like Nightwish, a symphonic metal band. Now the logistics of trying to set up a tour for just a regular four or five piece band is pretty crazy. Now imagine a band like Nightwish, if you were going to try to tour with a 60 or 80 piece orchestra, how bananas the logistics of that would get. Like you wouldn't be able to do it. And if you took the orchestral elements out of their music, I mean, the songs wouldn't fall apart, but I mean, there'd be giant hunks missing. So for a band like Nightwish, it makes perfect sense for them to play to a click track and have those orchestra tracks as backing tracks that they're playing to. If you went to go see them or if I went to go see them, I would completely expect that. Because again, the logistics of trying to tour with an 80 piece orchestra and a rock band, I mean, it's just impossible. You can't do it. All right, now our third and final scenario is going to be every band kind of in the middle. Now, I don't know what band specifically may or may not do any of this, but there, I'm sure there's bands out there where it makes sense that where maybe live they just play regularly, but maybe there's the odd song where for some reason they need to have a backing track and play to a click. Maybe there's an intro section that starts off the song and continues a little ways into the song. Well, you need to be able to play in time with that. Or maybe similarly, somewhere in the middle of a song, a backing track that's important to the song kicks in and the band needs to be in time with that. So I'm sure there's situations and bands out there where they play to click tracks and backing tracks, but only on certain songs when it makes sense. So really the answer boils down to this. If you're the type of band that requires to play to a click track and needs backing tracks to play to live, and that makes total sense for your band, well, then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, really, it's just an Another set of tools to use at the end of the day. But now on the flip side, if you're playing to click tracks and backing tracks because your band just can't play together live to save its life, well then this is a completely different conversation and now it's a crutch. And if your band can't play together live, then you shouldn't be worrying about clicks and backing tracks. You should probably be heading back to the rehearsal studio and working on your performances. So anywho, I hope you guys got something out of this video. I just wanted to give my two cents on an argument that seems like kind of a pointless argument at the end of the day. I mean, really, what does it matter? For some bands it makes sense, for other bands it doesn't. Problem solved. So anyway, I just want to thank you all for watching. I've been Mr. Jeff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So take it easy. Bye.